first U.S. dollar front and center, obviously again, higher highs yesterday, up again this morning as the market continues to acquiesce to the Quad 4 outlook coming our way. Uh, we got the, you know, the, the disinflationary impulse underway as well. Uh, coming through um, just, you know, as, as a function of the underlying trend and then amplified further by uh, any, any kind of derivative and in, in flow through impacts from, from the virus. So got a disinflationary impulse from, uh, from the demand channel and from a strengthening reserve currency in the dollar. Uh, gold continues to work as well. Probably get questions about that. I think we have some, some charts to, to show up. Um, it, it, you know, gold is working in the face of, of a strong dollar. Uh, you got you got haven flows, uh, so quad four flows. Uh, you got falling real rates, uh, and you got further expectations for for central bank easing, uh, both domestically and globally. So uh, that's why gold continues to work. Um, there's your real yield chart. Um, we fully retraced the normalization effort uh, back to negative here, uh, at least according to the to the ten year tips uh, yield uh, read. Um, so that's why gold continues to work. You can see the relationship there. Dollar and gold both going higher. Is one of these wrong? Uh, both currencies to a degree. I understand gold acts on real yields, but is gold in danger if the dollar spikes too high? Where does the negative correlation start? Um, well, I guess there's, more broadly, there's a risk that, um, you know, that there's this kind of homeostatic mechanism to markets where um, and too high, too fast uh, in, in in big macro factors. So if you're talking about yield spiking or you're talking about the dollar spiking, um, at some point it becomes a negative and then feeds back negatively into, into market prices. Um, I think, we, I don't know if that question came through before the presentation, but um, you know, if it, in the top three, I kind of walk through why uh, gold continues to work here in the face uh, of a strong dollar. So it's primarily, um, it's primarily haven flows. Um, it's the fall in real yields. It's the expectations for, for growth slowing uh, and for incremental central bank uh, easing, um, kind of looking out a little bit. Um, you know, the, the basis of it is if you have a relative divergence, right? So you can have a, you, you can have a few things happening. So if you have a relative divergence, um, like we saw in 2018, so that, that, that's an attractant for, for capital flows. So that's supportive of U.S. assets and it's supportive of the dollar, right? So if you have a rel positive relative divergence for growth or policy domestically, which tend to move together, if you have a positive relative uh, growth divergence, you're probably going to have a uh, relative uh, policy divergence. Yeah. Um, so if you attract capital and that, um, that flow of capital is supportive of the dollar, um, and then you get, um, and, and so you get tightening financial conditions globally, you get imported, disinf imported deflation um, coming back to us from those strong dollar effects. Yep. Now the Fed's below target or below their inflation target, and so what do they do? They ease, potentially when conditions get too tight either, you get enough, enough disinflation he here domestically, or you get enough tightening of financial conditions where it's really flowing back negatively in terms of both growth and disinflation, um, you know, us, us re-importing that. Um, so you ease, um, and then that easing causes the, a, a relative divergence in U.S. growth, or it perpetuates the divergence in U.S. growth, right, which started the whole process to begin with and, and caused the capital flow and the dollar strengthening. Um, I, I think, it, it, you know, to the extent we continue on the path that we're on, it's kind of a bit go big or go home uh, kind of setup for the Fed. Um, so they need to either, they can't perpetuate a relative growth divergence for the U.S. They can't do just enough for that to occur and then kind of perpetuate this cycle. They need, they need to go big enough where you get, where they, you can kind of get a global reflationary impulse. Um, you know, the rest of the world can kind of take the handoff from that. We get a global quad one and quad two kind of scenario. Um, and then it takes the shine off of the dollar and, you know, kind of extricates the Fed from um, that, that cycle I just described. Thank you.